Welcome in to Duval Daily presented by GenJag.com. I'm Jordan DeLugo. Thank you so much for tuning in here on a Friday, January 6th, the night before the AFC South title game between the Jaguars and the Titans, winner take all in the AFC South. Of course, the Jaguars will have an opportunity to backdoor their way into the playoffs if they lose this contest, but we're full steam ahead here. At Gen Jag, the Jags need to be focused on beating the Titans. That would give them a home playoff game next week. It would really make their path forward a lot easier, simpler for all involved. So we're going to get into Jaguars and Titans matchups to watch today. Tomorrow we'll certainly have some uh, keys to victory and bold predictions. But for today, we're going to stick to matchups to watch I think that there are a fair amount of interesting matchups in this game that we're going to tackle, but we are going to stick to three or four of them here today. I'd like to remind you to hit me up on Twitter, at Jordan DeLugo. You can let me know what you think about my matchups to watch here. You can also follow Generation Jag or at Generation Jag. Hit that like and subscribe button here on YouTube. Really appreciate y'all's support. It's been an awesome, awesome stretch here, last couple months here in Duval. Uh, encourage everyone to paint the town teal today and throughout the rest of the weekend. Show your Duval pride. This is the weekend to do it. All right, so getting into these matchups, right? I think it obviously starts with Derrick Henry, and uh, we've been talking about that all week. Loading up the box, playing gap and assignment sound, swarming to the football. These are things that I've talked about, things that... Defensive coordinator Mike Caldwell has talked about, but as much as it is about Derrick Henry in this running game, it's also about the offensive line and the way the offensive line's blocking schemes are trying to attack the Jaguars' defense. As much as it was Derrick Henry early in the first quarter of uh, the Jaguars' win over the Titans a few weeks back, the offensive line was creating big creases, big holes for Derrick Henry to run through, and uh, so I think that From a schematic standpoint, you've got Mike Caldwell, who needs to have these guys ready for the Titans' style of rushing attack. Um, And then you've also got to have your big boys up front ready to control the line of scrimmage early in this game a little bit better than they did a few weeks back when they beat the Titans in Nashville. Because remember, early in that game, Derrick Henry had almost 100 yards rushing in the first quarter. The Jaguars kind of shut it down after that, started forcing turnovers and all that, and, and kind of stole the game away. 36-22 to kind of ran away with the game, I should say. But early on, Derrick Henry was getting his, and the offensive line, not from a pass protection standpoint, but from a running standpoint, was creating push, was creating big gaps and holes for Derrick Henry to run through. So, again, Mike Caldwell needs to have these guys ready from a schematic standpoint, how these Titans are going to attack them. And then Foley, Devon, Roy Robertson, Harris, all the guys that are going to play on the interior and the edge guys are going to need to be ready to bring the physicality early in this game. They have to match energy. They have to match physicality. Um, because if you, if you are the Jaguars and you're able to slow Derrick Henry down and make sure he's not popping off against you, the game is over. I hate to say it for the, for all the Titans fans out there that might tune into this, but if you don't get Derrick Henry going and you're the Tennessee Titans, this game is over. You do not have the passing game offense operationally with Josh Dobbs being in this system for three weeks. Uh, you don't have the receiving talent, even if Traylon Burks is able to go uh, with Burks, Woods, and and Westbrook Akina as your top three, you really just don't have a super threatening group there at this point. Could Burks develop down the road? Yes, but right now he's not there. He can still make plays, but he's not the guy that uh, is going to scare you away from loading the box against Derrick Henry. So uh, if you're the Titans and you don't get Derrick Henry going, I think this is a really long day. Now, if the Titans do get Derrick Henry going, then it becomes a real contest. It becomes a contest that could last uh, a full four quarters because if they get him going and the Jaguars don't have an answer, not only are they driving the ball and scoring points, the Tennessee Titans, but they're also keeping the ball out of the hands of Trevor Lawrence, and that's not what you want if you're a Jaguars fan. So, again, 
it starts with slowing down Henry, but a big part of that, and the part of that that is kind of overlooked in my opinion, is how Mike Caldwell is going to have his guys ready to hold the point of attack against the Titans' offensive line, to hold the line of scrimmage. I think that's going to be huge. Uh, people talk about, oh, Derrick Henry bouncing off tackles, running away from people. Yeah, that can happen, but in order for that to happen, it starts up front. If you can win the battle on the line of scrimmage against the Tennessee Titans early in this game, you're going to put them out of the game early. Now, my second biggest matchup to watch, it's Doug Peterson and his whole crew. When you talk about Press Taylor, Jim Bob Cooter, Mike McCoy, this whole kind of offensive and and passing game uh, group of guys here versus Mike Vrabel and, and Shane Bowen up in Tennessee, I think that there's going to be a chess match, right? Mike Vrabel is a really, really good defensive coach. They have a, a, a plan throughout the last X amount of years that Vrabel's been coach, half decade, whatever, that they have been able to create an aggressive attacking defense. They are really good against the run, but they've been porous against the pass. They are going to be probably, it looks like, getting Christian Fulton and Amani Hooker back, which is huge for them. Christian Fulton was not available in the Jaguars' win over the Titans earlier in the year. However, Amani Hooker, their safety, he was there. So it's not like they were completely um, shorthanded against the Jaguars last time they played when the Jaguars put up 36 and Trevor Lawrence threw for 368 yards and four touchdowns. But how does that translate? How does that impact this game, this AFC South title game? Doug Peterson versus Mike Vrabel, uh, these staffs versus each other, offensive staff versus defensive staff. I think it's going to be fascinating because the, the Titans defensive staff, quite frankly, did not have an answer for the Jaguars offense. They did not have an answer for hitting Evan Ingram on these quick um, out routes, crosses, all this quick game, getting him the ball in space and allowing him to use his athleticism and God-given ability, um, they didn't have an answer for it, and he had a career day. Um, So how do they defend Evan Ingram? How does Doug Peterson potentially um, counteract you know, if the Titans come out and they have a different plan for Evan Ingram, then who do you turn to? Do you turn to Christian Kirk? Do you turn to Zay Jones? Do you turn to Marvin Jones? Uh, where do you go if, if they come out and they try to bracket Evan Ingram or take that away? I think there's plenty of places you can go, but for Doug and Trevor uh, and this offensive staff, it's figuring out what's the what's the best place to attack consistently. I have a hard time believing they're going to be able to cover Evan Ingram unless they double him. And if you try to take something away from the Jaguars, look, we know they're going to try to take the run game away. That's what the Titans do. Titans, they try to stop the run and then get themselves in positions to defend the pass. The problem is they haven't been good enough defending the pass. A big part of that is the fact that they have 10 defensive players on injured reserve. So um, I think if, if you try to take away Evan Ingram, Doug's going to find a different way to beat you. And then also you have the, the, the issue of Jeffrey Simmons, Danico Autry, Rashad Weaver, these guys up front for the Titans. A bunch of these guys have, have racked up the sack numbers this year, and they're tough to deal with. Again, though, if you bring a lot of pressure and you're just trying to pressure Trevor Lawrence and win that way, A, Trevor does really well handling pressure um, in his face, B, The Jaguars have shown that if you're going to bring pressure, we can get the ball out quickly, we can get it to the hot receiver, and we can beat you that way. So I think Mike Vrabel, Shane Bowen, these guys have a really difficult job going up against Doug Peterson and Trevor Lawrence and these guys, Uh, but it is going to be a chess match. Mike Vrabel, he's a guy that can pull some things out of his hat and uh, surprise you, and this is a win-or-go-home game. He's He's going to be bringing all the stops, so... The Jaguars, Doug Peterson, he needs to be ready for a bunch of different things that Mike Vrabel could throw at him, and I think he will be, and I think I give Doug the advantage. I'm not saying Mike Vrabel has an advantage over Doug Peterson. I think Doug and his offense with the talent that he currently has has the advantage over the Titans' defense. I, I Straight up, I just do. But that doesn't mean that Vrabel and Bowen won't land some punches, and you have to be able to withstand some of the punches they land defensively because I don't think it's going to be easy – as, as it was last time, 36 points, the Titans defense just looking completely inept. I think they're going to play better in this game. 
Um, those are the two biggest things. How do you control the line of scrimmage up front early for the defense and and defend that running game and Derrick Henry? And then for the Jaguars offense, just the chess game between Doug Peterson and Mike Vrabel. Is he able to scheme Evan Ingram open? If they try to take Evan Ingram away, where do they go with the football? Uh, Zay Jones could be an option, and this is a guy who's been up and down for the Jaguars a lot. So obviously Christian Kirk could be an option. He's two catches away from hitting $500,000 incentive, and so Zay Jones is two catches away from hitting a $250,000 incentive. So I think they'll both get that. But, yeah, I think it'll be interesting to see how Doug and and Mike Vrabel kind of trade punches in this one. Got a couple more. uh, Not quite as big here, in my opinion. I think clearly the trenches on the defensive side of the ball for the Jaguars slowing that running game down early, absolutely critical. And, again, Doug versus Mike. Um, I've got Chigo Conquo here. As well versus Trey Herndon, the Jaguars safeties, Jaguars linebackers. Chigo Conquo is a matchup problem because he has incredible athletic gifts at the tight end position. They can move him around the formation. They can get him uh, the ball in, in a variety of ways. And you've seen tight ends give the Jaguars a problem this year. Uh, I'm not as concerned with it because of their situation on offense. They have a porous offensive line and pass protection. Uh, while they can get the job done in the running game at times, pass protection-wise, it is really ugly for the Tennessee Titans. Uh, Quarterback Josh Dobbs, again, has not even been in this offensive system for a month yet. So I think when you talk about – you talk about defending these receivers, it's not going to be as difficult because of what has to happen prior to the receiver getting the ball, which is the offensive line has to hold up and Josh Dobbs has to find them, right? So um, I'm not super worried about any of the Titans receivers in this one. They might pop off and have a player two here, you know, throughout the game, but I don't think this is going to be a consistent passing attack by any stretch for the Titans. But if there is a player you have to watch, I think it's Chigo Conquo because, again, he plays the tight end position. They can move him all over the field. Incredible athletic gifts. He's been get, getting targeted quite often by the um, by the Titans offense as of late. Now, he did have a slower game last week with Josh Dobbs getting in the lineup, so we'll see how they remedy that. But I think Chigo Conquo from a talent standpoint, from a skill standpoint, gives the Jaguars defense, which, again, kind of struggles with linebacker coverage, uh, struggles with their nickel coverage. I think that could give the Jaguars the the biggest issues on Sunday defensively outside of the running game for the Titans. And finally, we've got Zay Jones versus Zay Jones. Um, This is a guy who's got the talent to get it done. He's big. He's athletic. He's strong. He's able to go up and get the football and make big plays on it, but then he also drops some easy ones. So Zay Jones versus Zay Jones. If the Jaguars are ultimately going to get where they need to or where they want to get this year, which is playing late in January, playing in February, Zay Jones is going to have to be reliable, in my opinion. There's going to be a time, whether it's this week against the Titans or if they beat the Titans and get into the play, there's going to be times when Zay Jones need to step up and make plays in a do-or-die game. And I think that that will have an impact on this season and maybe be one of the deciding factors, whether the Jaguars win or lose, maybe not today or this this week, but throughout the rest of the season if they get into the playoffs and all that. So I think you just want to see Zay Jones – mentally focused and I think he is mentally focused but for some reason he just puts the ball on the ground too often and so uh, just Zay Jones versus Zay Jones you got to make the plays that are there to be made I know you're, you're you're able to go out and make some of the plays that you don't think any that no one thinks you should be able to make but you got to make the plays that everyone makes the easy catches and if Zay Jones can do that I think the Jaguars offense is one of the most dangerous in football bar none But that is going to do it. Again, we're talking about slowing down Derrick Henry. I think that has as much to do with holding the point at the line of scrimmage and playing gap sound as it does actually just tackling and swarming Derrick Henry. I think it's the Jaguars' defensive front with Foley and Devon and RRH and those guys versus the Titans' interior offensive line. 
You got Doug Peterson versus Mike Vrabel. You got Chigo Conquo versus Herndon, the safeties, linebackers, and then finally Zay Jones versus Zay Jones in this one. Thank you all so much for tuning in, Duval. I uh, hope you enjoy the rest of your weekend. Again, you can follow me on Twitter at Jordan DeLugo, Twitter, uh, Generation Jag or at Generation Jag. Hit that like and subscribe button on YouTube. And if you want to support the channel further, you can check out GenJag.com, pick up some new gear. You can also become a channel member right here on YouTube. You can check out that in the link in the description below. Again, thank you so much for tuning in. Paint Duval Teal this weekend and uh, have a great one. Go Jags.